It's your boy Downsize, and I'm back once again on my block with another hood classic. This one right here, shout out to uh to uh Chill from 16 to Life. Um, I was just watching a video by him right now, um, speaking about you know his last last few weeks in the pen and you know getting out and stuff. And um, I wanted to speak on the same. I want I wanted to do the same and and, and give people <clears throat> my last my last days in prison. And and the reason I want to share this with everyone, I, I don't typically like to do this, but the reason I want to do this because I want to speak to the effects that being in prison so young had on me. Because it's telling, you know, the story when I got out. It's what happened the day I got out. Um, so let me let me let me flash you back. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> let's say maybe a few months prior. I, I had already decided because I got denied five times at the pro board. I got denied my, my TR to my PR, my TR to my ERC and my ARC had, <clears throat> I wasn't eligible cause I was a three, five. Right. And so I had given up on it. I had like 18 months came my number. I was like, go, I just do the 10. I'm out. You know what I mean? I wasn't tripping, but I didn't think I was getting out. I never, ever from the time I went in, didn't think I would ever get out of prison. I didn't want to really. There was a part of me, there was a side of me that did not want to come home. And I did everything in my power to keep from going home. I had been, I had been implicated in murders in there. Um, I had been implicated in, in, in giving someone a hot shot, um, which wasn't true. Um, and I was cleared of it, but, um, so, and then, you know, stabbings and all the other stuff that I was involved in there anyway. Um, Okay, so like I said, I pretty much given up on the idea of coming home and I just had given up, on, well, especially given up on the idea of, of any of the state giving me a release, you know what I mean? So I didn't feel, I didn't feel that they ever would, except for if I, if I killed my number, if I made it out, I would make it out killing my number. Okay, so there's a lot going on at this time, right? Okay, within, within these months, you know, it's just a short few weeks, um, Cause it's from, it's from like, let's say mid to late, mid, you know, about springish, I mean, fall, autumn of, of, of 98 to, I get out March of 99. Right. So, so you got, you got the whole thing with, between us and the border brothers that had jumped off. And then, um, there was other stabbings where fucking, me, Sackthorn, and Tyson were involved in, in getting Jake the Snake. Well, not Jake the Snake, but but three of his dudes after he had got got in the child line. And um and so and so there was a lot of turmoil, right? And at the same time, uh ADC had tried to validate me. They had tried to validate me and a few of us, but we didn't have patches, me, spider cars, we didn't have patches, so they couldn't do nothing to us. They took us and they did the, they did the thing, but they couldn't. They didn't have no. They didn't have they didn't have the patch to get the points to validate us. Okay, so so we're left on the yard, but there's all this turmoil because then this Terry Stewart hit happens. This whole conspiracy to kill uh, the Arizona Department of Corrections director um, Terry Stewart, and so. I am then again investigated for that because Junior mentions my name. Right. And so, and so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm ever going to get out. Like I, I had given up. I've told this story before how the day I got transferred, when I went back to my cell, I gave up. I cried, bro. I just, I was done. I had no intentions on ever getting out again. And so, and so, um, that's why I didn't allow my, my, I have one best attorneys in, in the state, Gary, Peter Clark. They wanted to take my case pro bono in the adults, but I, I gave up. Right. So, like I said, I want to speak to the effects, the trauma of, of, of this experience. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to showcase, trying to make myself none. I'm just, these details are only what was happening leading up to. So you understand, I didn't expect to come home. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't expect for it. I was not prepared to come home. Having went in so young, none, no one was prepared. None, no, I, there was nothing done by no one in my life that prepared me for coming home. Nothing. It didn't matter what was available for, available to me coming home. It didn't matter. 
they, they did nothing for me. It did nothing for me. And you can see. Okay, so. <clears throat> I get, I'm in Simran. I get out of, I get out of VC, I get out of a CDU in Tucson Complex Detention Unit, which is it's level five facility, Supermax. And then, so I get out of there and, and they put me back in Simran and they open up, they open up, uh, was it to Ch Charlie the front part or dog the front part? Dog, I believe. The bottom run, the top was was locked down. The back was locked down. PC. Remember the homie man Lord was in there. He was a porter in there. And so and so, um, when they moved me in and they bring me back, they clear out that so because a, a sergeant Hart, the SSU sergeant's office was right there, and they wanted me and my homie uh, Iron Mike. OGI and Mike, uh, Mike Cerna, right there where they can monitor us. Um, so, so I get a, I get a Sally Turtle from Tusa, funny motherfucking turtle. I've told this story. And Turtle, he was only out like a week or some shit like that. So his lady was still on his visitation, and he had some pounds in the drawer of some bug. So he got a visit that first weekend, and he come back with a, with a, with a butt full. You know what I mean? So we get we get blown. And I remember the day we had just we just aired out the house and aired the sound and everything. I guess see I called it a house. You see how subconsciously, instinctively I called it a house. When I go back there, you see how I refer to it. But otherwise, you see the way I am about it. Anyway. So 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 um they call me for, for UA, I mean, not for UA, for, for classification. I'm paranoid out of my mind, bowled out and shit. And I go in there fucking, I don't think I'm going to make it through. I was going to fucking just refuse because I didn't think I was going to get through the process. I was so fucking paranoid and tripping the fuck out as we, I, I, I really did it, right? But I go in there and they drop my score down to a 3-4. And, and as a 3-4, I'm eligible for my earned release. So they do the IRE for my earned release, and then they class they reclass me to Santa Rita. Right? So then I get, you know, a week, whatever goes by. Well, that, when I come back that day, when I come back that day, later they come, they search my house when I'm at UA, when I'm at, when I'm at classification. Then they come and want to UA me, right? So, so... They end up letting me piss in my cell, and I drank a bunch of bleach and all kinds of shit, bro. So I like fuck it, and I wasn't, I was gonna refuse. And the homie from New Mexico was like, "Nah, bro, just take it because if you refuse, you're done. But you got a chance. You drank bleach and shit, so you got a chance that there'll be nothing in there. So just do it." So I like fuck it, you know what I mean, thug life, and I did it, and um, and um, so when it comes around, like you know, days a week later, I. I got out on a Friday. That much I remember. March twenty fourth, I believe it was, and um, of ninety nine. And so, and so, um, the day before I'm gonna get released, they 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 roll me up, and I I'm like tripping, like what you rolling me up for? Cause I don't know if I was going home or what. And they didn't want to tell me, so I'm spazzed out. Well, I'll fuck you. I'm not moving. You ain't gonna move me. You know what I mean? The homie's like, hey, bro, just give me your mom. I'm gonna call your mom and fucking we'll check. So, you know, back then, you know, you could fucking, they had the, it was a different phone system back then. Bro, they had operators who would answer the calls when I first got locked up that time, bro. True story. Some of you might not be on the sidetrack on this one, a little side note. But when I first went to prison, we talked to an operator. Collect calls. We spoke to an operator who answered and connect calls, bro. There was literally an operator on the line. Anyway, um, so homie calls and he says, like, hey, my your mom talks to the talk central office and you're going home. She's like, my mom's up to town trip. Got to stop tripping now. He's coming on Friday. So they they reclaim, they move me to Santa Rita, you know what I mean? And I'm there overnight. And the whole time, bro, I'm not thinking I'm going to go home. I don't think I'm going to go home at all. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking, like, every time they call me, I'm thinking they're going to tell me, hey, that UA was dirty. Everything they call me for, I got to sign all kinds of shit. I'm thinking they're going to call me for a dirty UA. Bro, the next day, even when, because they call me the next day, you know, I, uh, I, CIU, and this is all these motherfuckers want to take pictures and all this other bullshit. And so, and so, and so, bro, I'm telling you, until I get out, in the Sally Port right there, Santa Rita, homies were coming and going for, for class and working shit through, out of the Sally Port. They worked at the complex, and they're like, where are you going home? 
bro, you don't even look like you, you want to go home. And I was like, so frightened, bro. You have no idea how petrified I was. I didn't think I was going to make it out, bro. I was scared of fucking death. And so, and so, and so then, bro, I'm going through the whole process. I get to complex to ACI and get the fingerprint, do all that shit, change I, like everything, bro. And it's, it's like, I still don't think I'm going to get out until I get into the car. I get out the main sally point. I put my shit in the car when I, I did not think I was going to go home. I seen the gate closed and I knew I was going home. So we drive, bro. You know, it doesn't help that the homies twisted up a blunt of some orange cush and we smoked that on, you know, down Wilmot to the freeway to the I-10. And then we go to the Denny's off the I-10 right there in Tucson that morning to have breakfast. As soon as I walk in there, bro, the sights and the sounds and shit. I have a, well, let me take it back. I get out of the car, bro, and I just start walking. I just start blindly walking. My mom's like, where are you going? I'm like, I don't know. I'm free. I can walk home. I really felt that. Like, I'm going to walk home. And that's why I started walking. This is the effects of this. is how fucked up I was, dude. And so, and so, when I walk into the sights and the sounds, bro, I have a panic attack right away. It fucks me up. I go sit down on the toilet because I'm changing in the stall, right? Change out. And um, next thing you know, fucking... um. I'm having a panic attack and I can't get off the toilet stall. Homie, little Gumby's like, come on, bro. He got to come in there two, three times. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I'm like, no, let's just go home. I'm rock. I'm literally doing this. I just want to go home. I just want to go home. I just want to go home. No bullshit. And then so finally my mom kicks in the door. Come on, fool. You know what I mean? I go out there and I eat. We go out there to eat. And I'm tripping, bro. Like my mom asked me what I want to eat and I told her. And when they started, because I was the last one they ordered, um, when they start taking the orders going around, my mom orders what I wanted, and I thought that she ordered for me. I thought that's what she was asking all this shit, right? Like, I thought she got it. Like, I, I wouldn't get this for me. You got this? You know what I mean? Like, I, I couldn't order for myself, bro. I, I literally could not order for myself. And, and when she gets to me, the waitress gets to me, I don't even know. I thought my mom ordered for me. I was so, I was so dependent that I thought that as a 24-year-old man just getting out of prison. I couldn't order for myself. And so, and so the waitress right there, sir, sir, I didn't even realize the homie gummy kicks me out of the table. Pow. What the fuck? Sir, can I take your order? And there's the, 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 the napkin holders placement holder. It has a banana split. I said, I want that. Cause I just, I didn't know what to say. She looks she's like, um, I don't know if I can get your banana split at eight o'clock in the morning, but I'll try. I was like, that's what I want. I said, bro, Oh, I'll see if I can get that's what I, I'll get it for you. And I end up eating a banana split, bro. Like I'm fighting back tears right now because the realization of how traumatizing and the effects that prison had on me going in so young and what it did to me and how it's taken so long for me to recover. Like I'm, I'm haunted by these stories. I don't appreciate them. I don't glory in it. People glory in these things. They make a living off of telling these stories. I don't remember that. This is a life lesson. This is this is to explain. This is to explain how I developed PTSD and its effects on me from all of this. And I pray that that no one has to go through this. That no child ends up losing their life like I did, bro. You know what I mean, peace. I'm out.